In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Lennox Elite EL18 XPV and the Daikin Fit, which is a side discharge inverter heat pump. We're going to be doing a deep dive into their efficiency ratings, how these systems perform in cold climates as well as hot climates, and we're also going to be talking about which systems qualify for the available heat pump tax credits that are available right now. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you're tuning in for the first time and want to stay up to date on the latest in HVAC technology and trends so that you can pick out the best HVAC for your home, subscribing is a free way you can show support to the channel if you got value from this content and also stay up to date on the latest in HVAC trends. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, both these systems at a glance, if you look at the, just visually looking at the Elite Series, the EL18 XPV and this Daikin Fit side discharge system, you might be wondering why we're comparing them because they look completely different and the reason that we're comparing these two systems is because number one they're both inverter variable speed systems and number two Lennox does not actually make a side discharge product at least not one that I could find on their website so the reason we're choosing the EL18 XPV is that this is a variable capacity heat pump which what that means is that it's basically when you look at a single stage system which is any system that's let's say 20 years old right now is most likely a single stage or a two stage system a variable speed system ran up and down along a continuum by comparison and so it's number one more efficient and number two it's better basically it's going to be save you money on your uh, electric bill every month but in addition it's going to be quieter and just a more comfortable system because one of the most common complaints we get from systems when we're you know interviewing customers and asking them what do you like about your current system what do you dislike about your current system I would say the number one complaint we get is not efficiency but it's actually that the system is loud or noisy and they're asking um you know, how can we correct that? And another common complaint that we get is that a system produces uneven temperatures where it, like it might be really cold in the basement or really cold in one particular room or really hot in another room. And the best way to combat that, there's a cheap hack that's free. You can literally just turn your fan into the on setting instead of auto. And what this does is this circulates more air in your home. And so as a result, you'll actually get more even temperature distribution just because air is circulating longer. So that's a free thing you can do. You don't need a new heat pump for that. This is why we always recommend inverter driven systems for people that where comfort's important to them. And if you're, you know, if your current system's working great, you like the way it heats and cools your home and you don't really have any complaints with it and you're not, you know, picky when it comes to you're wanting something that's quieter and more efficient, then you really don't need to spend the extra money to get an inverter. You will see an energy savings on this if you plan on being in the home for five years or 10 years because over time, you know, energy prices go up and these systems are cheaper to operate than their single stage counterparts. So that still might be a reason to get it. But the number one reason that we really recommend these systems is you're going to see a, a much bigger comfort improvement. So that being said, that's why we're comparing these two systems. And just to kind of dive into the head-to-head -head numbers comparison, let's look at the Lennox efficiency rating. So as you can see on this Lennox system, the SEER2 rating goes all the way up to a whopping 21.6. So very efficient. The HSPF2 rating, which stands for heating seasonal performance factor, goes up to 8.7. So not bad, but that that number is basically just so you know that's a reflection of how a system performs in uh, heat pump mode and so how it's you know efficiencies is in the heating season and if we look at the uh, Daikin fit we can see that the SEER 2 rating is up to 17.5 and the HSPF 2 rating is up to 8.6 so the at a glance the Lennox is more efficient however what you'll be surprised to find out is that this Daikin system qualifies for the tax credit whereas the Lennox system does not now this is true for the Daikin Fit Enhanced, which is a specific model. If you're curious what makes, you know, how to tell if something's enhanced, um, if your contractor tells you it's the enhanced version, all you need to know is that there's basically an E on the end of the, the nomenclature. So if you look at this right here, this is the, you know, this is the one and a half ton version. It says DZ6VSA18, blah, 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 whatever. There's no E at the end, so we know it's not enhanced. But if we look at right here, this is the enhanced version. And the only difference is in the nomenclature, it says D, uh, DZ6VSA241EA. And that little E makes the system an enhanced system, which means it has better heating performance than its non-enhanced counterpart. Now, the reason that this is relevant is that if we look at what systems qualify, I'll make sure to link this in the description for you. This is the energystar.gov website. You can see that this DZ6, you know, it has cold climate designation for tax credit purposes. 
purposes, which means that it's going to qualify in these northern blue states. So if you live in one of these states where a cold climate heat pump is required, in order to get a tax credit, it needs to have that cold climate designation, which you can see the Daikin Fit does have. However, the Lennox Elite 18 XPV does not hit that, although it is tax credit eligible in the southern states. And so the difference is that these southern states more geared towards cooling and cooling efficiency, whereas in the northern states, they're more geared towards heating and heating efficiency. So that's something, you know, that I do like to point out. And just to give you kind of a deeper understanding of what that means and how that works is that that means that this system, that means that this system maintains a minimum capacity, 70% of whatever its capacity was at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And it also maintains a minimum COP or coefficient of performance of 1.75 at 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, what does that all mean? Well, I'll spell it out for you right now with this chart while we have it open so you understand exactly what we're talking about. So basically here it says GZ6VSA24. This is the two-ton version. You can see at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, this system, the two columns we're going to pay attention to is MBH and COP. This stands for BTUs per hour. So this system is 23.0, just means 23,000 BTUs per hour. And this COP number three of 3.3 is the amount of electricity or the amount of heat that the system is able to produce per one watt of electricity. So at 3.3 as a COP, that means this system requires one watt of electricity to produce 3.3 watt of heat. And in order to meet that cold climate designation, what that means is that this system at five degrees Fahrenheit has to maintain at least 70% of its capacity and a COP of 1.75. And so you can see at five degrees Fahrenheit, that's this outdoor ambient temperature right here. This has a COP of two, and it also has a, the BTU, and it also has a BTU output of 16.1 thousand BTUs. So 16,100 BTUs, which is enough to qualify for that cold climate tax credit and main, because it maintains 70% of its capacity that it has at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And it also has a COP above 1.75 degrees as well at five degrees Fahrenheit. And so when you look at this cold climate designation, that's all that that means. And that's the biggest difference between these two systems from a tax credit eligibility and efficiency standpoint. What this essentially means is that uh, the Daikin Fit's going to do a better job in heating climates, whereas this system is going to be doing a little bit better job probably in cooling climates. However, one thing to consider is that if you are curious whether or not a particular system qualifies, on the same page, you can scroll down here to explore models and it will take you here to where you can actually search and see that specific models will qualify. So this is the Daikin Fit Enhanced we have pulled up and you can see that it's tax credit eligible in the north, but it is not tax credit eligible in the south. And so when you scroll over here and look at the specific data and you see which systems or which furnaces qualify, you're able to determine whether or not these systems, you know, the, the efficiency is going to vary based on the match of the indoor unit as well as the outdoor unit. And so if we also look at this EL18 XPV and we try to see what pulls up here, you can see this is tax credit eligible in the south, but not tax credit eligible in the north. And this is the two, as you can see, this is the two ton system. And that's going to vary based on the indoor unit model number. And if you look at the various tonnages, you'll see basically that across the board, the two ton system, I believe is all that qualifies with the Lennox. And so that's, that's one limitation is that you only have um, with the Lennox system, if you're needing a larger tonnage, it still will be a more efficient option for you. So rather than just getting a system that arbitrarily qualifies for a tax credit, you really want to get something that works well in your climate. So from a cooling perspective, this system is going to work great. So if you lived in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, the EL18 XPV system might be a good option for you. Um, but in a heating climate, you're definitely going to want something like the Daikin Fit Enhanced because that's going to keep up better. We do install, you know, the Daikin Fit Enhanced in the southern states as well. Like we have a, an office in Phoenix, Arizona, and we install these all the time because the Daikin Fit Enhanced does keep up and it's whisper quiet, which is why our customers love it. And it comes in at a price point to where it's almost, it's probably cheaper than this, you know, Elite 18 anyways. And so because we're able to offer this at a lower price point and it's still pretty efficient because it is an inverter and it's very quiet, people often, you know, opt for this just from a comfort perspective as well. But the bottom line is that's kind of a, a broad overview. Now, a few other things I want to touch on, both these systems do have what's called an electronic expansion valve, which the benefit of communicating systems is that they can be paired with air handlers that have an EXV. An EXV basically, or an electronic expansion valve, uh, the way that that works is that is a device that 
that opens and closes based on a call from the thermostat and from the condenser outside so that when the variable speed compressor first ramps up and it first starts ramping up, it opens ever so slightly just to allow a little bit of refrigerant into the coil. And the benefit of this type of setup is that that system is going to be more efficient on startup and it's going to be better at cooling because it's a... It, an electronic valve, it's going to pinpoint the amount of refrigerant going into the coil. And so the biggest benefit with that is that it's more efficient and that's also how it maintains comfort from a quiet perspective and is a lot quieter than their non-inverter counterparts. And that's just one thing I like to point out that both these systems have in common. So, you know, in summary, if you're in one of the Southern hotter states and, you know, it might make more sense to go with the Lennox system, although the Daikin Fit will still keep up as long as you're getting the enhanced version. But but it's still not going to qualify for rebates unless it's the two ton version. And then whereas the Daikin Fit won't qualify for rebates as well in those Southern states, but it will in the two through four ton versions in the Northern states. So if you're in a heating climate, like any of these, you know, cold blue states, Daikin Fit will get that rebate uh, or the Daikin Fit heat pump will. And then if you're in any of these Southern states, the Lennox system only will for the two ton version, but either of these systems are going to be, you know, pretty good. And they both have their pros and cons. Obviously Daikin Fit's going to be quietest where the Lennox is obviously going to be more efficient since it had higher CR2 ratings as well. And so, you know, hopefully you found this content helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service rating on Google as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas. I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area. Some of which have even been featured on our show. This way you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or infrared radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region, we're partnering with those contractors. So click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC Dope Show contractor in your area. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that YouTube thinks, thinks you should watch as well as a video about heat pump efficiency ratings that we mentioned earlier. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode.